Thank you. I've enjoyed the discussion this morning, and uh, particularly because when you talk about urbanization, it's kind of good news to the ear of an architect. So, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and we like the idea that more and more money is going to be spent, more people being brought to the cities, also. Uh, I'm going to apologize. I hate to do that, but I unfortunately have to leave in a very few minutes for a 10:30 meeting. But Inkai is going to carry on. I'll just do the introduction, uh, and then uh, Inkai will follow through with the projects. Very briefly, it's not about trying to sell architecture, but it does show what China's been able to do in a very short time, and no other country has been able to accomplish. So my first visit to uh, China was, um, uh, my first visit to China was in uh, 1987 or 8. And, uh, I'm going to show you a photograph of Shanghai in 1990. You'll see the difference uh, very quickly. Um, we're in 19 cities. I'm just, KPF works around the globe, but uh, you'll see that the majority of our work, look at that, all through the coastline of China, and now we're moving inland. But uh, I won't go through those statistics. One of the interesting things is that the mass land mass of China is equal to the land mass of the United States, within a few feet. And it's great. It's great. Uh, but one thing about China, that, you know, with its population of roughly one to, we'll say, 1.4 billion, and the U.S. at 320 million is, that that population of China, for the most part, has had to be built along the eastern side, the coast, because one third of China is available to build on two thirds is not very good for building. So if you had a building one third of the U.S. <coughs> population of 1.4 billion, you get a lot of cities, very large ones, and you get all dense cities and a lot of very tall buildings. So it's a good reason why in China we end up with many tall buildings. Uh, one that you may be familiar with is the one in Shanghai we did for Mr. Moore, the Shanghai World Financial Center, uh, which has become a great image uh, in that city. So they say we're currently working in 19 or eight, I think it's 19 cities now in China. Most of our work started out on the coast, the big cities, Shanghai, Beijing, etc. And like I think Yukon, uh, uh, you said the you know, the economy was now moving inland. And that's absolutely right. The, the most recent work are with the cities of the second and third tier to the west and mostly inland or to the south. On that note, because I said I'd just do the introduction, and Inkai, who uh, is a partner of the firm and has really made our China business successful, graduate of Ch Tsinghua University. Right. Thank you all. I'm sorry I have to leave, but I enjoyed very much all of your comments. Thank you so much, Gene. So continuing on, uh, a couple more slides, I think. Thank you, Gene. Um, to skip a, a little too fast, I'm just going to uh, go back to this comparison between the United States and, uh, and uh, China. Square footage, total square footage is more or less uh, very close to each other, but the population, one country obviously is uh, almost four times more than the other. But more, uh, more compelling fact is actually, if you see the population concentration is more or less all around the East Coast. China is not like the United States has a bi-coastal uh, geography. So and uh, part of the reason is uh, as you we know, they have the Gobi Desert, the Tibet uh, Plateau, you know, all the mountain regions in the middle. So that translates into the real livable land is uh, probably another three times smaller than what the United States is. Three times 12, meaning the true density, the urban density is about 10, 12 times. So that means that about 20 people here in this room times another 20. If it's in Shanghai, that's what the density is going to get. A lot of people, uh, uh, you guys already experienced. We've done 39 projects, like Jim just mentioned earlier. Uh, <coughs> last decade is mostly around coastal. Now we're more in Sichuan and uh, even like Guizhou, you know, third tier city. Uh, they want uh, some super high rise. This is a picture of uh, 1990 in uh, Fudong. No one will recognize. I remember I just graduated back then, and uh, it's all just, you know. Rice field and uh, warehouses. And, uh, Could be 1945. Could be, yeah. yeah. It's been like that for <laughs> like another yeah, 50 years. This is 1908. It's not the latest, but you see the, the dramatic change. And, uh, <coughs> same thing around this corner. This is only what, 10 years, 10 years difference. Um, that's in Kudong Mujiazhe. Some of our work in Shanghai 
mostly both on the Fudong side and uh, the Fuxi, the Old Town side. I won't go over all of them. Some of the, the most uh, prominent ones, this is the Shanghai World Financial Trade Center uh, for Mori uh, property, uh, 492 meters tall, uh, with park height at the top. And uh, after completion of this one, we're doing two more park height, one in Hangzhou, one in uh, Qingdao right now. The observation tower at the very top is the skyline of Pudong. Uh, this is the <coughs> earliest, one of the earliest building we finished. It's in Shanghai. It's called Henlong Guangtang Plaza 66. It's for Ronnie Chen's uh, Henlong property uh, of Hong, uh, Hong Kong. And uh, ever since uh, the completion of this project, I mean, the Henlong now have about, I don't know, 12 mixed-use uh, development uh, all over China. And this one is by far the most uh, successful one. The rental rate, um, some of you are in the real estate uh, specialty will know uh, the leasing rate is still one of the highest in Shanghai, even though it's been completed for about 10 years. Uh, let's see the next one. This is the shopping mall. It's the highest end in Shanghai. Wheelock Square is for the wharf property the, from Hong Kong as well. And uh, this one is not that far from Henlong Plaza. It's on the Fuxi side as a small retail separate from the office tower. And we finished uh, these two hotels in Xintiandi, everyone knows Xintiandi in Shanghai. <coughs> and uh, it's one is a Langham, the other one is Andas uh, in Xintiandi, right north of Xintiandi. Uh, we did this one about three, three or four years ago. And our Shanghai <coughs> office is actually right, right in Xintiandi, right above the Starbucks. <laughs> a couple other projects for the big clients, you know, SOE, we talk about they dominate, you know, every sector. The Sinok is uh, uh, in Beijing on the second ring road. It was a design competition. So far, idea of the, the whole building looks like a ship, you know, it's uh, for the oil, oil company. There's a huge atrium in the middle. This is the, they call the Hua Mao Center in, uh, in Beijing. It's uh, between the third ring row and the fourth ring row. Uh, then they have the, the highest end the retail mall over there. That was complete right before the Olympic game in 2008. This is the one that's on the drawing board right now we're doing. It's called the Beijing CBD C15. It's going to be the tallest building in Beijing when complete. It's uh, 550. 520 meters. We don't know the exact height. We keep changing the height. Every day, but <laughs> it's for the civic bank, civic group of China. Where is it going to be? be? Uh, it's right in the middle of the CBD, the Taoyang district. It's in. It's going to be the tallest. The current tallest is the China World Trade Center. It's yeah. it's over here. It's about 300 some meters. Yeah. So it's on the joint board, but they already broke the ground. You know, construction already started. They don't stop. So you get a better picture. That's the whole CBD area. That's the China Wall. <coughs> yeah. Some other project, this is called the Palace 66 in Shenyang. It's also for Hanlong property. This is right next to the, the Forbidden City, the, the mini Forbidden City in Shenyang when the emperor uh, was uh, residing there for a while. So there was a high restriction can't build too tall. So the whole building, Louvre, kind of trying to evoke the traditional um, kind of a pagoda roof. This is the in interior shop. Uh, another one of the tallest ones complete is called the Ping'an Insurance uh, Headquarters in Shenzhen, the Futian District. And uh, right now, it's about 90 mm. meters out of the ground. Some other building uh, in Hong Kong, this is in Macau, it's called Wen Central. It's a Mandarin hotel at the bottom, then the top is the, <coughs> the apartment, service apartment. There's a retail component uh, right next to the waterfront. Uh, this one just finished uh, last year, Heisen Place uh, in Hong Kong. Have a big retail component, it's open to the general public, then it's an office tower at the top. Uh, the 
last one is the ICC, which is one of the two right. super top power in Hong Kong. If you've been to Hong Kong, you can't miss it. This one is, uh, you know, West Kowloon. That's where the subway, everything is all stopped there. Good restaurants. Good restaurants. Okay. Top, yeah. The Ritz Carlton yeah, at the top, and uh, <coughs> uh, Morgan Stanley. A lot of financial firms uh, works there, and uh, then there's a big uh, retail components in the in the basement. It was a, a design competition. We win it because we give it the meaning. The the Kowloon is a Jiu Long, you know, give it the, the dragon tail and have that kind of a dragon scale. We really like that, the culture and metaphor. <coughs> and it's all linked with the subway. Everything's all coming from the dragon tail ascending into the tower. That's the retail and coming up to the office. This is the hotel Ritz Carlton entry on the other hand. So it's a two tower, it's supposed to be the sort of the gateway for the Hong Kong when the, uh, the ships come in.